sweeping up the, the uh, stuff. But he's deadly our business wife. And he said, well, why can't we waste this stuff? You know, we, we paid money to get this set on the set, so what's it doing out here? And here, let me show you. And she's uh, all over the phone. Who are you shooting at Disney World? Mm -hmm. Or shooting at Disney At Disney World. Mm -hmm. was a, she really was like the queen there. She could come and go. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Did she ever talk about the show? Or comment on it? Did Lucy ever have an input on the show? I don't think so. I doubt it. I doubt it very much. She wasn't that sort of a brain, but she had that character down. You know, Lucy is a character. And so they didn't even have to think about how she could play that Lucy. That person was her. Get her in her. In the wilder moments. <laughs> when you were writing the, the, the Twilight Zone scripts, did you get, were you pretty much free to deliver the script that you wanted to deliver? Did you get notes from the producers or Sterling or the network? This is a fellow named Buck Houghton. Yeah. And he was Rod Sterling's choice. But it was Rod Schell. Right. And he was given his chance to pick a producer to produce the film. And so he picked up. And he was a brilliant choice on his part, because I worked with Buck, and so did most of the other writers. We would, uh, I would make an appointment, might have to wait several weeks with Buck. I would go in with Buck, who was very friendly and intelligent, and said, well, what's, what do you got? And so I pitched him one of my plot schemes for, for one of these films which leads to something else, which leads to something else. And before it was all over, I could usually get an assignment to write the show, merely by showing an, an intelligent understanding of what it is that Buck is looking for. Mm -hmm. And whether I'm giving it to him at the moment, at least I understand what he wants, because we're in sync. That I felt was the most important part of the job, because I didn't have a chance to talk with Rod, he was busy to read. He would read the lines we wrote for him somewhere on the stage in a camera, and I've never seen it. I've never seen him doing it. He didn't seem to be around in that capacity. But he was, uh, we shared an agency at the same time. So I was running across him at the studio or at the agency. Actually, Steiner agency was his. Uh, they were in stages. That uh, program, though, Star Trek, it, it certainly struck the chord. Nobody, everybody who was involved with it knew that there was excitement there. The men, even the networks, were treating it as though, my God, what have we got here? And, putting up good dough to make sure that good actors and things like that were involved in the making of this show. And I thought that uh, Nimoy was a brilliant, brilliant choice to be a part of that team. And his character, Mr. Spock, that's when I first saw it, I thought it was kind of boring. He's going to try to be wise by being quiet. You know, not say anything, so you can't criticize him if anything comes for him. And after a while, he was actually saying some words. And uh, I got, I was friends with most of the people who wrote Star Trek before Star Trek. You know, like Charles Beaumont and Richard Mathis. And, well, Beaumont was dead by that time, I guess. And the Beaumont had already got an opportunity to be part of that. But he was part of a circle of a dozen people who were in and out of Star Trek and the and environments, whatever it all was. You know, I, I think I see one never expects to make a profession out of writing for TV. This season, that show, but nobody else will talk to you. 
you know, it's a business lucky. And so when I persisted from season to season to season, working in television, I was continually surprised I was able to keep finding work and making a mark in it because it was so transient. And often, oftentimes, many, many writers only get away with one stuff. They write one thing for television. And then where are they? They've got a great job. Why isn't somebody using them? And I never understood any of that geometry of that sort of those sort of realistic things because I felt the same way. I'd look at certain actors and I'd think, why is it everybody in town having this experience? You know, is, is, or is it him? Is he doing, is he saying no? That's hard to imagine. You, 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 you,